What's up, everyone? Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Talk at Moments. Today, I have, at some point, we're like yin yang, <laughs> yang ying. Well, I don't know why that word just stuck in my brain or just got stuck in my brain. Uh, Chioma is in the building today. Hey. My travel buddy. <laughs> Hi, Boo. How are you? Hi. I'm sure a lot of people have been waiting for this particular episode because. Every time, I think the first time we were in Paris together, mm -hmm. we got loads of, oh, this is a combination that I didn't think I needed mm -hmm. or whatever. I saw a couple of those comments mm -hmm. here and there. And I thought people actually do not know how far or you how go, way, Literally. Yeah. When was, actually, was it? Was it Lushmore? I, you know what? I was actually trying to remember how I met you. Was it Good Hair Space I feel or before like Good Hair? It was, no, it was, it was obviously Good Hair had been there, but I feel like the old space in Lushmore. Of course, that old space had been several times. And or was it prior to that? I think it was prior to that. I think I met you. I don't even remember. I, so I don't remember. But I know that there was a time that we used to see each other almost every single day. Literally. And you were always trying to teach me how to lay my hair down. Mm -hmm. And you and were then terrible the, at when it. Then, I was so terrible. <laughs> and then Lushmore opened. I remember the very first the good time, space. the good hair space mm -hmm. at Lushmo. I remember the place. I, I, I am having like, you know, memories. From... Do you remember the old space where like you were coming to the office, like our yeah, small office and to I was, do and then, hair? Yeah, I remember <laughs> to do my hair. Mm -hmm. And then every birthday mm -hmm. of mine, you and Kika would actually be my official hairstylist. Literally. Do you remember when I met Kika in London? In London, yeah. Yes. I think you had something with Florence. It, no, I think it was my book launch. Yeah, and yeah. that was the first time Kika came yeah, to style like, my oh, hair. Yeah, because yeah, you linked us up together. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, you know, saying, oh, what are you doing later on? And... This is one thing that I picked up from Kika. Like, Kika is not the kind of person that will hang out with other people's friends. Because she gave me that vibe of your Choma's friend. I thought, I was doing this one? <laughs> and then we all just laughed it off. But I remember, you know, back when. Yeah. That's the word. We've come way, 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 way back. How are you? Not bad, tired, Welcome stressed. Welcome to the podcast. I can't, but how's this going to work? How can your friend interview you? Like, is, that, is that a thing? <laughs> it's happened a couple of times. So you know. don't ask me rubbish. <laughs> you if know. I do, you're going to have to answer because, you know, yeah. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, girl? Like, Okay, I'll it, just say no comment. <laughs> You're not allowed to say no. No, you know my secrets and then asking me. No, I'm not going to ask. No, don't, well, maybe. Be nice to me. Be not nice to me. Guess what? Okay. I'm going to ask you everything. I'll, I'll tell. I'll and tell. we'll talk about it. But how are you? So what's stressing you out? Just work. I feel like I'm doing so much at yeah. the moment. Like yeah. Chalmers Closet, the foundation. Yeah. Still have to ensure that good hair's going. We're yeah. renovating Brass and Copper. Yeah. Oh my God, I, I know it caught <sighs> fire so mm. last, was it this year? This year. Oh wow. Where were you when you got the phone call that, you know, the building was um, open? I think I was at home. Okay. And then they called me. I think it was the manager of Good Hair that actually called me. She's like, Madam, fire, fire. <laughs> I was like, what, what, what? She was like, fire, fire, come now. I said, and where, who? Like, what? We never want to have. Your heart, yeah. it's like, do you understand? Your heart stops beating. Yeah. I was panicking. I was like, where, where, what? She was like, brass and copper. I was like, oh my God. I quickly ran. I hadn't even showered, got in the car, was speeding. Brass and copper is actually, I mean, I live in a quarry, just close yeah. to the bridge. Brass yeah. and copper is not far from the Lecky Bridge. It's usually like an eight minute drive. Mm. That was the longest eight It felt like eight seven minutes. hours. It felt like eight yeah. hours. It's yeah. the longest eight minutes of my life. Wow. I was just praying, God, let it not be too bad. Like our sweat, our blood, sweat and tears. I remember them times, me and Kika, like Kika was in London when mm -hmm. we were building the Good Hair Space. I remember one day I was on the floor in my closet. I was just crying. I just said to Kika, there's no way I can have the space ready by December. I won't be able to do it. I think we're going to feel at this. And I was crying because I just didn't know where to start from. Yeah. And she was like, Chama, calm down, stop crying. It will be okay. The next evening, she was in Lagos. Literally, she jumped on a flight, came, held my hand through it all, and we did it together. That's you know, amazing. It was stressful, it was tiring, exhausting, but we did it. Mm. So to go through all of that, and you're now telling me this place is on fire, what fire? Mm. Hmm, it's okay, it wasn't funny. You guys have always had this dynamic between the both of you. Um, you know, everyone's always... It's always been Kika and Choma, like the good hair girls. That was what you guys were known as at first. And it's like, okay, these two business partners. And I know how crazy it is starting a business with a friend. How have you guys been able to keep that together? Because I have launched businesses with friends <laughs> and we don't talk no more, girl. <laughs> we don't talk no more. Some which you, I mean, the one major one which you know about. Um, how has it been? How have you guys been able to just still remain best friends I was, even when you guys have your other friends and you guys are working together yeah right um I don't know like 
honestly, I feel like it's God first things first. God has just made it so smooth for both of us to maintain like our businesses and our friendship. Because I feel like most times women in business, something must give either the business or the friendship. You know, mm. one will scatter. But mm. with us, like it's been super smooth sailing, no issues. We don't argue. I feel like we understand each other. And I feel like in our businesses or like as individuals, even though we're so similar, we have different strengths and weaknesses mm. when it comes to business. Mm. So nothing ever really overlaps the other. You know, the things that I'm really good at, you know, I'm more into like, okay, the books, the financing, the this, the that. Do you understand? Kika's very good at advertising. Kika puts, I don't know, she put this, the, the cover of this bottle on her head and say, buy it. People will buy it, mm. you know. So the marketing plus the, you know, the PR. technicals coming together. Yeah. It just makes sense. It's a synergy that works. Mm. Um, I feel like if we were so similar in certain areas, mm. maybe we would clash because, mm. you know, each person wants their own voice to be heard. But I respect what she's good at. She respects what I'm good at. And we try not to interfere consciously. So the things that Kika feel strongly about, I let her decide mm. those things. And what I feel strongly about, she allows me to decide. Mm. So having that understanding and... How do you guys resolve conflict? Because I'm sure there are moments where you guys have conflict. Honestly, we hardly have conflicts. I really? know people think that it's a lie. But we just don't. Like, you know, when you it's like you have a sibling that you just understand you mm. know like I know Kika knows my weaknesses I know her weaknesses we understand each other so there isn't really need for conflict and mm. if anything I don't know if we ever had like a minor disagreement which is barely ever I could probably think of maybe one or two times we sit down and we talk mm. you know I know when we open Brass and Copper because me and Kika had been partners our whole lives what, what it feels <laughs> like yeah. and then you know with Brass and Copper we have other partners and it's like okay it's like ah, what's going on what's going on you know the one time it was like ah, what's going on what's going on I went to London we sat down over drinks discussed it resolved it and that was it do you know That's what I mean amazing. so yeah no issues it's, yeah. it's literally like because I mean it's important for us to talk about that because I feel like a lot of um a lot of people have th this thing where they say they can either be lucky in friendships or either be lucky in business and they can't have both you know what I mean with the same people and it's interesting to hear you literally talk about how you guys just resolve it and, and then that's that it's, it's really um, amazing friendship and yeah. business because what happens is like your income matches you can go on holidays together, together. you could mm. do this you could do that because you know mm. how it is that when you have a friend that is a bit do you understand isn't in your income bracket <laughs> I don't want to say broke, but is it in your income yeah. bracket? It makes it a bit more yeah. difficult, you know. You know that popular saying that uh, I, I watch it. If the, if there are five losers, the sixth one is also like basically you are your net worth, in Literally. my opinion. And you know, I'm also thankful that you know you we can easily say to ourselves, let's jump on a plane. Paris was I don't know how many hours before the hours. flight, <laughs> and it's not like ah, this I have to because I feel like when things are like that, as you said. There's no need for there to be any competitiveness. No. You know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We can we can do things and yeah. it's amazing. When do you think you became so business savvy? All my life. Really? I feel like just watching my aunties, you know, my parents, it's always been about business. You mm. know, even my like my yeah, dad's sister. That's an Ibu babe. My dad has five <laughs> strong, like they're so strong, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like they all had nine to fives. Half of them were either doctors or into oil and gas, but they all they all had their side hustles, you know. Wow. Like everything they did, they did it with strength and they mm. were all socialized at the same time, fashionable. So everything about them was A star, A star, A star, A star. Mm. So it's what I knew. It's all I understood, you know, with women. So for me, like it was it just it was a no-brainer it came natural to me and in university even though good has started I think it was my second year of uni and that was like our first like proper entrepreneurship journey prior to that I used to organize parties really <laughs> well, yeah, my, do you remember my 32nd birthday do you remember you Whoa. literally the one we had at the spa place in Ukui mm -hmm. the one that mm -hmm. wore the bomb and dress mm -hmm. one you guys came yeah, to start yeah, my yeah, 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 do you yeah, know yeah. you brought like the cops yeah, you yeah, brought like yeah. the lights do you yeah, remember that yeah, and there was yeah. one thing you were supposed to do which was my hair <laughs> And you came with like customized, you know, I've never really said this to you, but I remember how you've always been a friend. Yeah. You've always literally been the person who chairs for me the most. In the I can't even explain it. I can just say to Choma, I need you to do my hair. Please come help me with my hair. And she's like, I've got it. And Choma is going to see Ankika, who roll up with cops, party cops. <laughs> things to wear on your hand to make the band I'm like I didn't think about that but it totally worked yeah. and you've always been extra literally <laughs> Chama is not the friend. I, if I want to get something conservative, I can never call her. Actually, you know, no, where's the fridge? Where is, you have to add the. But I just remembered that birthday. Actually, yeah. do you remember with the gold? I remember at the the, 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 the spa. Yeah, the yeah. clarinets that you came, and then 
Wow, that was actually the year I launched the TM luxury bags as well. Okay, I mean it's, that's, that's been a while. Been a while. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and then we always used to go to like fashion shows together. Mm-hmm. Do you remember like the GT fashion mm-hmm. show? I remember one particular one because it was like the after party on Sunday, and w- there was, the VIP thing was upstairs. And you and I, while the show was going on, we decided to sneak to go and have, have drinks, drinks upstairs. At the Do VIP, you remember? I remember. <laughs> oh gosh, we've had so many memories. Oh my god! I remember. Word. I, remember. I mean, you moved to Nigeria. Nigeria and I remember those days you used to complain so much about Nigeria. <laughs> How have you been able to say <laughs> I still I, I still hate it, like I haven't adjusted. <laughs> if you see me Chama Chama can rant over by this country. <laughs> But the only thing I have to say, Nigeria is the only country that you can go from being a broke ass to a billionaire the next day. I agree. It's the only country. That's why I'm here because the opportunities are endless. It's virgin territory. So literally Mm. any form of value that you have to add Mm. will literally get blown out of proportion and Mm. you'll make it. And now you're a reality TV TV star. Mm. How did that happen? Because <laughs> if, if you asked me five years ago, <laughs> <laughs> would you even uh, even two years ago would you have ever thought that I would that you literally would do like venture a reality, into that? You do reality TV show? No. So what made you do it? Even I couldn't have seen it. Even when well, get... you're killing it on it. Oh, we thank God. Well done. It's tough though. <laughs> oh, God. If it's more than tough. What is the hardest? I mean, let's talk about how you even decided to it. do it. Because it, as you said, two years ago, I would never have thought like if you had the opportunity to do a reality TV show of any kind, I would not have thought you'd be the girl that would be up for it. So what right. changed? Um, I mean, it didn't change the day that they approached me. I still was like, Are you sure you're in the right place? Yeah. You're the right person. Why would you think that I would be interested? Yeah. Um, and I was like, plus I'm not a housewife anymore. I'm not married. Did you guys not get the memo? Like I'm not. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh no, 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 you don't have to be married. Yeah. To be Did you not TV. watch any of the franchise? No, I only saw Atlanta the first season, which was about like 20 years ago. And I probably saw like three episodes and that's it. I don't enjoy reality TV. How are you going to get an issue? Like, you don't watch I just videos. ask them when I watch it. It's like punishment. The like, madam, you need to watch the next episode. I'm like, is it out? Okay. And I sit down. I'm just there like... So you went in blind? Completely. Blind sure. in the sense that, first of all, we didn't know who else was going to be on the show because they okay. wouldn't tell us. Um, yeah. They were like, they wanted our reactions to be natural when we saw the other cast members. Um, I think I was pretty shocked. If you remember season one, when I saw it, I probably was mute for the first three episodes because I was in shock, number one. Um, also, I just, I didn't really have a formula. Yeah. You know, I feel like some of the other ladies had like binge watched a lot of the mm-hmm. seasons of other mm-hmm. franchises. So they mm-hmm. were ready or they had like a persona that they wanted to put up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just literally went there be myself, like mm-hmm. completely, sometimes even too honest, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so did you feel like when you when they told you the format of the show, did you think that you were going to be in the company of what you're used to? Was yeah, that what? 100%. Okay. I could tell that maybe that's what made you sign up for it. 100%. Yeah. I was definitely given that impression. I was like, what kind of, they were like like-minded people, people mm-hmm. that you know, people that are already your friends. And it was a complete opposite. So I was like, oh my God, you know, and it was like, I almost felt like I got thrown in the deep end mm. and I needed to now be forced to interact with these people and pretend like they've been my friends for so long. And mm. I was just like, how am I supposed to do this? Mm. You know? Mm. So it was really tough. I won't lie, the first, the first time we filmed, I ran, because we filmed at Ross and Copper, I ran into Good Hair and I was like, can you call me like the producers and stuff? And I was like, guys, I can't do this. I said, I don't know anybody here. I feel so uncomfortable. I feel like a fish out of water. I Uh cannot do the show. And they were like, well, you've already signed the contract. You know, you have to, I know I'm a lawyer, so I respect contracts and stuff. Uh And I was like, okay, fine. They were like, don't worry, we'll get better. We'll bring more people like yourself. I was like, okay, cool. You know, and yeah, so that that's kind of like how I continued. And I survived. I mean, yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. Do you feel like the show has taught you? Because you know, people always say reality TV show is different from like real life. Do you believe that? Or do you feel like you get to learn lessons about real life and characters and people and upbringing and just, you know? So, so, so yeah, because it forces you to interact with people out of your comfort space. Uh. So if I've grown up only around a certain type of people, that's all I know. Oh. I haven't really been exposed to Do you know what leaves the brain free in my head? Your dog's eating sushi, which I, which I roasted you for when I reviewed the show. Because I was like, girl, you really sell them sushi? Are you but crazy? that's how they move. That's what they like. My dogs behave like me. So whatever I like, they like. What, oh what I eat, I give them. This so that's what they used to. moment for just putting it on the show. But I was like, only Choma will actually sit on TV and say she's ordering sushi for her dogs. I yeah. thought I was bad. And then I watched it and I was just like, wow. Okay. That's how they roll. But yeah, like, so I think just being around people that, are not 
Do you know, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily have been around. Mm-hmm. It was very difficult. It really was. Did you have any at any point feel like I respect contract? I'm a lawyer, but I, I'm not. I'm just gonna stop showing up to film. Um, I'm also a finisher. I yeah. never start something that I won't finish. Once I start it, I have to get to the end of it. You know, it's it's just a thing about me. Mm. So, and I like I like a good challenge. And so even if I even though I felt uncomfortable initially, I was like, you know what? Let me see how this goes. Let me challenge myself and let me see if I, I can actually mm. do this. Mm. And Eventually, I started to open up myself a little bit more, started to, you know, get to know the ladies a bit more and just be a bit more, you know, involved. Uh, uh. And it wasn't so bad. I mean, I, I've made a really good friend from the show, Iabo. Yeah, I was just Who would have ever that. thought that myself and Iabo would have, you know, bonded the way that we have? Uh, and you guys are off uh, friends off the show? Because what completely. I find happens in this dynamic is a lot, a lot of times, even when they say you're introducing somebody that person's not really your friend mm-hmm. it's just for the camera mm-hmm. but it's just to tell a story mm-hmm. but you and Yabo seem to have really really sort of like hit off a friendship because I know you guys see yourselves even when you're not filming sometimes she's over at yours sometimes you're over at hers how did that even begin how did you guys how did that did you I'll, think I'll, that it was gonna... I'll tell you the honest truth about that situation how it really happened so that day, obviously, I was getting my hair done at Good Hair whilst they were setting up at Brass and Copper. Good Hair and Brass and Copper are in the same building, mm-hmm. you know. And some of my staff, they were like, ah, madam, 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 ah, this show that you said you're doing, you can't do this show. And I was like, why? What's the problem? They were like, ah, the people on this show, madam, you can't do it. You can't. And I said, why? They were like, ah, yeah, what is on the show? <laughs> I said, who's that? They were like, ah, she's very controversial. You know, ah, madam, no, no, no. These people, ah, she's too controversial. I said, well, what do you mean? Like, yeah. So I went like, my house had started beating. I said, God, who's this person? <laughs> but they said it's so controversial and I won't be able to stand, you know. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I go upstairs, you know, I think it was her and Toyin having um, lunch at Brass and Copper. Uh-huh. And I didn't know how to explain it. Like, she, her eyes were warm. Do you understand? Yeah. You know how you could look at somebody and you just see kindness and everything about her was kind the way she spoke to me her spirit her aura it was just so welcoming Mm. it felt like a big sister automatically Mm. you know and so when we started to speak and interact nothing negative just pure like Mm. you know when you connect with somebody like Mm. on the spot Mm. so when I got downstairs I said but what's wrong with you people there's nothing wrong with her they were like ah madam you don't know anything you will see you will see (laughs) I said because anytime you see her bonnet you know it's about to go down do you understand (laughs) I think that black bonnet really deceives people so people think that she's like controversial yeah. like cantankerous yeah. and she really isn't she's mm. the entire opposite in fact funny enough I tell her and Kika I'm like you guys remind me of each other because they're just people that like they don't pretend they speak their mind mm. like you said she was like ah. she called me she's like Chama, talk as I should come I'm not hanging out that's your friend dude ah. do you understand for her like she'll want me to be there and be like oh no 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 it's mm. fine you know they're mm. loyal to the core they, mm-hmm. they're honest with their feelings and that's how Iabo is because you're that kind of a person do you think that you're a loyal person huh do you think you're a loyal person? Who, me? Yeah. I'm a very loyal person. So I'm very close to people that are loyal. If you're mm. not loyal, I cannot be close to you because I know what I do for my friends. Mm. And so I expect the same, you know, mm. vice versa. Mm. So with the Yabo, like seeing those traits that, you know, mirrored mine, I was like, she's actually not bad. And I remember speaking to my mom that night and I was like, oh, I just met this lady. And I was like, somehow I feel like I'm really going to like her. This was day one. I didn't know anything about her. You know, and then of course I went on Instagram, looked at her, and I was like, okay, she's not bad. Mm. And then the season started to progress, and she just naturally took on a role of a big sister. That's nice. You know, like she would look at because uh, trust me, half the time I'm confused. I'm just like, what's going on? What are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> she'll explain to me. She'll break it down. You know, she'll hold my hand, and like just weird things. Like yeah. I love fashion. Okay, I'm on Instagram. You know, yeah. social media, but yeah. I'm not in entertainment. Yeah. And I think people would always mistake in that because yeah. when you see someone posting and they're popular, mm-hmm. you think that I'm not an entertainer. I'm not in entertainment. So anything to do with production filming that, that's you not my forte yeah, so yeah. a lot of things will confuse me and she'll always like you know so remember I used to come late a lot in the first season you still come late you were late today I've changed okay I was only 30 How minutes late only, only 30 <laughs> minutes late you were one hour late no I was, I was not literally gonna sc- oh sc- lies 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 Girl. I was only 30 minutes Wait, what time did you get to my birthday so, okay, I was sick. Wow, you're really going to bring that up? Girl, I was you sick. came literally at the end. I was sick. And then I rocked with you all night. I was the last to leave. And then you know what is so annoying? This girl will accuse me of having no sense of urgency when we travel. But guess who arrives late all the time? It's okay, at least I'm showing up with my passport. Hey. <laughs> Shots fire that story. Yo, we have to share that story. You touched on this marriage thing. Like, why are you not married yet? Bitch, why are you not married? <laughs> Where the husband at? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not married to Kevin? Abby. 
Oh, fair. Okay, <laughs> lovely, lovely. It's okay. I've been, I've been there, done that, got a t shirt, mate. <laughs> How I you navigated the streets of this? I, I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah. And the way, like, it's I important. just, like, everyone's getting divorced. So clearly, there's something that's not so rosy and mm. fancy about I think this it's thing. This generation. Mm. I think that one of the things, do you remember the, in the taxi in Paris when we we're saying that it's so funny how people think the worst of us, but don't realize that we have conscience? Literally. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Like there's some things that if I did, you call me, I'd yeah. be like, talks, really? Mm-hmm. And there's some things that I'll be like, Choma, mm-hmm. it's not really jiggy now. And even but... with you, so it's crazy because how many rumors are you going to clarify? Do you know what yeah. I mean? When you see stuff about yourself that in your mind, you're like, jokes. Yeah. That's, of course, it's not true. But people believe that stuff. They do. And are you going to come out and be like, hi guys, so disclaimer, I read this in the blog, it's not true. Like you can't, you almost can't do it. Yeah. So you almost have to live with people's like rumors and impressions mm. and, and whatnot, mm. you know. And I guess that's one of the disadvantages of being, I don't know, famous, popular. Yeah. Like, like being in this, being the in this space. Yeah, they it's will a lot. lie about you. You did also, I remember a quote, I think you said it on your show, like, you know, thing, being successful also, I find it as the gift and the curse. Sometimes I really hate when men and I'm the one I always whenever I say this to Choma she what do you mean by I hate when men try to humble me do you think that happens with you as well Mm -hmm. where it's like men almost some or some men that I've dealt with in my life always feel like they've heard so much about you and they just want to know what it feels like to be with this person Mm -hmm. and then in the process they try to humble you like I know you already have your own I know, you know, when your guy comes with that sort of attitude, mm-hmm. like, I know you're independent, but I know you got this. I know, but they're still trying. And then I'm just tired of it. Like, I just feel like I these days I crave to date people who don't know me. Right. Like when you say you are not, you, you don't know anything, you don't have mm-hmm. Facebook, you don't have, a, yes, let's mm-hmm. talk. Mm-hmm. I don't like people who I think have, because there's a preconceived idea of who they think you, you are. are. Mm-hmm. Do you have those issues as well in dating? Yeah, I, f- I feel like, increasingly so it's become a lot more difficult for me to like date because you don't know who's with you like genuinely or who's trying to be with you for clout you know I mean one thing I will say is when people get to know me it's always a different ball game so mm. even if they came with wrong intentions the moment they get to know me and like we bond and we speak and they're like oh my god she's so intelligent oh my god she's so kind she's so caring all they these different say things that to me but I feel like they lose interest <laughs> after I'm not lying. I've said this to you Are you before. being too nice? No, I, it's not that. Honestly. Are you, are you giving too I much of yourself I don't think too I'm soon? even nice enough. Like, even T.Y. and I have this conversation. I feel T.Y. is even nicer. Like, when she's T.Y. Savage and how nice T.Y. is, sometimes I'm like, I need to learn from you. <laughs> I'm very wicked. You know, by the time you talk one, I would have 10, 10 mm-hmm. blasted your life, blocked, by. Do you understand? So I don't think that is it. I think that sometimes they like the idea of who they see online mm-hmm. and who they see on TV. And when they realize that, I really enjoy the days that I look homeless. I really enjoy eating my amala. It would like, mm-hmm. yeah, I like the caviar. I like the, the finest things in life. But I'm also the girl who just wants to walk the streets and grab ice cream. Right. Some of them, they are like, ah, it's almost like you're too normal. So, okay, so do you feel like they don't like that? They don't like that normal I think they, they want bored. that superstar. They like that wake up diamond, hair deed, makeup, like looking like a doll all the time. Let's go to Monaco. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I feel like that part of them, you know, even when they know right. you're intelligent and you're so much more than that, it's like maybe that's what is what is enticing them. A lot of these like fancy looking marriages a lot of women are not happy. I don't think I can. Would you ever stay in like an unhappy situation? No, I won't. I'll try and make it work. I mean, mm. I don't intend on going into no, a marriage feel like kids, having divorced you in mind. change the dynamic of if you had kids, you have to stay regardless of how bad things get. Um, I feel like it just depends. I feel like when you have kids, it does make it harder. And I feel like you should make more of an effort to work it out if you have children. Because mm. like for me, I grew up in a household that was complete. You know, I like to think of my family as the serial packet family, which is like a perfect family. Mummy, daddy, kids. Everything's just moving smoothly. And that's the life that I had. Mm. So I want to give that to my children. But I don't feel like anyone who's in a marriage that isn't serving them anymore, where you're constantly unhappy. Mm. Maybe the man is like violent towards you Eesh. or all of those different things. Should I don't feel like it's a death sentence sentence marriage Mm -mm. do you know the other day I was when this Cassie and Didi thing first dropped and everyone was talking about it I took a moment to thank the Lord because I have a mouth on me and I was like all through my life God has loved me and just protected me I've never had like domestic and shout out to the women who've had to deal with I, I mean I I my heart breaks just thinking about any form of abuse emotional physical 
or in particular physical abuse, Lord knows that I don't know if I could survive it. Like reading things that Cassie documented, I had that moment where I was just like, how have you with this, your sharp mouth? And it's not about sharp mouth because the people who are also like nice and who speak and who are humble and they find people who pummel them, you know, to the ground. So I don't know. It's, I think that's one of the things that in my life, I'm just like every day I have to be praying. Be God. Domestic violence, I can't tell my, God will receive a visitor. I promise you, like I, I but so, so I've, I've experienced that before. I've have been in a, you? yeah, I've been in a relationship that was violent. Like I'll say that my first relationship and, and it, how long did it take you before <clears> you broke out? But this is the thing you feel like, oh, God receive a visitor. God, that's not how it happens. Really? Because the most violent men are the, the serial beggars. I remember the first time he did it, he stayed outside of my house. He slept outside of my house for three days on the floor in the rain, sh- sunshine, everything. He was begging. Obviously, by the fourth day, I'm not a devil. I was like, come inside, sleep on the corridor. I woke up in the middle of the night. He was next to me on the bed. And they beg, they come and shower you with gifts and tell I you all these that. things. And I'm a very strong, you know that I'm a strong person. But even I went back. And then it happened the second time. So how do you find the courage to leave? Because, you know, I'm genuinely I did asking. not have the courage to leave. I was just there. You know, it happened twice. And when I say happened, it wasn't like one small thing. Both times I ended up in hospital. The second time, because the first time I was like, I told Kika, my friend, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. You know, let's just There's forgive him. There's a shame that comes There's from There's a shame it. that, yeah, yeah, 100%. And that stigma as well. And guess what? The first time he did it, he went and told, every, he started calling people. I was literally in the house, like, bleeding. Like, it was really horrible. And he ran out of the house and he started calling people. You know, they, they, they start to, I think also as a narcissistic trait, they start to defend themselves. He's like, ah, Chama did, did this, she did that. Yeah. She hit her, he was like, oh, I hit myself or something. I hit my face on the door because my nose literally, like, shifted. And he started calling everybody. So my, people, people, my phone was ringing, but obviously I couldn't pick up. I was literally on the floor. But when I, you know, was stable, I saw all these messages. Oh, what happened? This person just called that person. Your boyfriend mm. called saying that, you know, you hit your face, you know, and that you were fighting him. So he basically put the blame on me completely so he would look innocent. So by the time I even started speaking up, it, it's like you're now defending yourself from the lies, not even telling that, oh, he's a bad person. So... It was divided. People thought, this girl's a troublemaker. And of course, my friends believe me. That's what I said about my mouth. Like, that's one of the things that scares me the most because people automatically think that I am the one that, you know... And of course, you know, I got a mouth on me. Pushed pushed the person. But but it wasn't... I mean, yeah, we did get into an argument. Of course, I was young then. So some of the things that I said, you know, messed with his ego. But that's that's no excuse. excuse. There's no excuse whatsoever to put your hands on anybody, you know, but he did. I did forgive him the first time. But my, my first brother, because he lives in London, he, he was in London at the time. He didn't speak to me for like a year because that one was ready to kill him. He said, he, that boy must meet his maker. And so I protected him. And so my brother like cut me off because he was like, this girl, you're not ready. The second time, Kika was like, no trauma. Mm-mm, we're not doing this. She called my sister, called my parents, called everybody. Did you fight her for that? Because you were probably mad. That I, I wasn't mad. I mm. mean, I wasn't happy. Of course, who wants to be, you know, pummeled into the ground? But, and it was really bad. She was dead. They were all banging on the door. They were like, open this door. Up. They could all hear it because I called them just before it happened. I was like, guys, come over. Do you were- think, I've always wondered, wondered what goes through men who, and this is not all sounding sexist and thinking men don't go through domestic violence as well. I'm sure they do, but I'm not a man. So I can't speak about what a man feels or goes through if he's stuck with someone who pummels him. I don't know. I can only speak from being a woman because I'm a woman. Um, I wonder sometimes what goes through this man's mind. You can clearly see that if this is not a fair fight. It's not. It's not a fair fight. You see men like you. Enter a ring with them and, and, and flex your muscle now. Do you understand? It's, it's not a fair but fight. But I feel like any man that hits a woman is a weak man. Clearly you're weak because why are you trying to hit a woman? And trust me, if they if they had their male counterparts, they wouldn't do anything. They, I never saw him fight a guy. If you, get, if you, if you got married, would you take on your, your husband's last name? Mm, I would. Like, I think I'm quite traditional. So really? I would love to. I, I wouldn't mind. But Chama Ikoku is such a brand. Such Nobody a vibe. knows Chama Ikoku. We know Chama Get out! I, think it's, <laughs> <laughs> I love... I love... I, you know, I love my dad so much. I love his... I'm yeah. going to keep Ikoku in, my mid- in, yeah. the, in the middle of I my name. I kept mine when I got Did married. Did you? Yeah. So what was it? Was, Toka Makinwa. Be, it was supposed to be Toka Makinwa Aida. So what? But it was only at home that he called me Mrs. Aida. 
Okay. But I was always called Tokemaki 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 Well, he understood okay. as well because he, he came from a family where his sister was a a, a doctor, okay. an OBGYN, a very top okay, OBGYN. Like a yeah, one. Okay. yeah, a proper one in England. And she's always still known as Dr. Aida. So mm. he never had a conversation with me of, baby, why can't you change your name? Like, he wasn't wired that way. He didn't care. And I hope that whoever I end up with next would actually love... Not mine, Tokemaki right? is staying. I you're, don't want to have I'm not taking anybody's last name. So you'll just keep your name yeah, Tokemaki my name is Tokemaki So what about your kids? What, what's their name? They can bear them? their father's surname. Okay. Yeah, they can take their so father's surname. you never changed your passport, your bank details? No, I never, my bank details, nothing changed. Really? We divorced. Thank God it didn't change. Thank God it didn't change. Imagine <laughs> what I have gone time to change <laughs> it back. Hey, yeah, please help me. Oh, I, I used to be Fama Fama Ida. Please, I need to become Tokemaki Wa my name. No, I built this brand no, new blood. I, I would love sweat. to keep my name. Well, at least have it in I the middle. I think you should. I have it in the middle. I anything. don't think you would even. You're the kind of person that will marry a man who will care. I don't yeah, think, right. Yeah, I don't think you would marry a man who will care. But I feel like if I mean I don't know who I'm going to end up with, but I feel like Igbo people are very like traditional. Listen, so even you, an Igbo man who meets you now, who sees what you've done for yourself, he would be very proud of you. You'll be the one to be telling people, "Do you know my wife is trauma?" You think so. Ah, I feel like Igbo men are very like. He they, will tell people, they want to. They like want to be in control. Here. They want to be like in that position. They so could possibly I, be. I feel home. like they like women who are like maybe like a, I'm not saying I'm not submissive. I can yeah. be if I love you. Like I'm very submissive. Mm. But Do I feel you like for men, I can cook. I mean, the things that I know how to cook. I don't know how to cook like star chambanga or like you know certain type of things. But mm-hmm. I can make like jollof rice, fried rice, mm-hmm. stew. You know, stir fry pasta, lasagna. Do you think like cooking is an art of like? An act of love for your I mind. feel like it is an act of love. Men love to be cooked for and catered to. And, you know, when I was in, like, you know, my long-term relationship. You that know, guy loved you, Shia. I, don't I know loved him too. Why didn't you just marry that my guy? Marry her sunshine. He really, I should have said that. I'm so sorry we're talking yeah. about so that one. Which one? Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. They both love uh, me. No, Ray, Ray of Sunshine. I liked how he Well, funny enough, even, even the other one I used to cook for. Eh, hey. mm-hmm. cause that guy. Oh, I'm, in job, love, I'm a different person. You ask how high. <laughs> Do you remember how in love with you that guy was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that one was really in love. And yeah. I, I could see the two of you together. Is he? Is he married now? He's not actually. So why don't you get back with him? We could actually. Why do I feel like you might even be dating somebody right now? You sit on my show and say we could actually. <laughs> no, it's just that he's in a different country. So it's like I know, mm. but I like the ray of sunshine guy too. Mm-hmm. All my exes have been amazing. I've not had like a bad yeah. relationship apart from that first demon. Mm-hmm. But everybody else has been wonderful, you know. And I cook for them. I'm Cancerian. We're naturally loving, caring. We're the most caring zodiac sign. So mm-hmm. imagine that like, being my partner. You're going to get the best of the best of the best. And that's on par, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen. She just said it as it <laughs> is. I mean, I I think I need to be a bit more domesticated. Like I I, I just don't do Try. anything. It'll, Listen, it'll, when a guy asks me, "Do you cook?" I freeze on my throat <laughs> because I'm just like, which answer is correct? Now? But if he loves you, whatever you, I don't think he cares. It. Even yeah. if it's sandy rice, sandy, he'll eat it. Someone actually said to me two days ago that you've never cooked for me, and I looked at him and I thought, "Why are you you? But you you have a home cooked me when you come to my house because that's your chef." I need you to cook for me. I was like, you do? But you... men love that. Yeah. They actually really do. Yeah. You should try it. I don't know how to cook. Well, go and learn. Maybe we'll make them stay. Go and learn how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> they don't leave me. What do you mean? Why is it not maybe I am the one who's living there? So you think that the fact that I don't cook for them is what makes these guys bored? It could be part of it. Okay, all the cooking you've been doing, why are you not here with the ring? Girl, I left. Okay, who told you I did not leave? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine this bitch trying to come for me on my show? Like maybe they, she actually said maybe they will stay. Girl, go and learn how to cook. Why should I? It makes a difference. I think the time Men that I was supposed to, to. Le- Oh, nice for them, but I'm not his mama. No, but they were nurtured in society to be catered to. Oh, that's very well. I can I hire- let me tell you something. You, strong woman, strong woman. Who's strong woman help? Go and learn how to cook for your man so you could be strong outside and be a woman at home. Oh, Choma, I beg. <laughs> Choma thinks he's reading me right now, but listen, let me just tell you something for fa- for a fact the time that I was supposed to have learned how to cook has passed in my life do you understand so there's no hope. right now I do have chefs if I need a home cooked meal you will get it okay and I'm good in the other department hey. so what are you talking about girl? <laughs> I, 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 I wear you know I wear costumes you know yeah. I lay down to so honey boo I mean I guess you can't have it all but that one yeah I mean but now that you said that I'm actually, actually thinking maybe, maybe I should yes. throw in a cooking class imagine like after your costume and the deed is done you now go and make some god for <laughs> my weave is going to be like stir fry or shoe after I've, I've worked hard Okay. Yes, you, I'm not lying. You know that I don't cook, and I don't regret it. No matter what you say, I don't mm, care. But I, there's certain things that men want 
and there's certain things nice that women of you, want. Nice of you to be the spokesperson for no, men. No, well, I don't want to be spokesperson. Nice of you <laughs> no, to look out but, for men. Sis, but let me you know the things that you like and what you want your man to do. Yeah. It's like X, Y, Z. Just Listen, like you have a I list. Want, if so I you want my man... up your list. Um, who told you the list is not updated already? If I want my man to eat, I know what to do. I will get him the food. I don't necessarily have to be in the kitchen. Why it's do I? It's the sacrifice that they want. That's why I said, even if you give him sand, he'll eat it. It's that sacrifice. He wants to see Toke in the okay, kitchen. Okay, guys, cooking. I'm making a promise. 2024, mm-hmm. as long as you come, I mean, maybe you should organize I mean, the cooking we, class. we'll need to learn together because I'm not the best. I don't know how to cook any soup. I can't even cook any soup. <laughs> so it has to be for both of us. Well, I like the fact that if anybody by give you stone, you go and eat that stone and you eat the sand and you drink water on top. But I think we should try and learn. Maybe on all these trips we go to. Yeah. Should we just... Maybe take a look? Yeah. yeah. We should, Let's do we it. We definitely should. I think that the like man will probably class. be so shocked. Yeah. I just feel like men don't deserve it. I know what I you mean. I look at their wickedness and I'm just like... I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But cook. they say like, be the woman that you want to attract. So be the person that you're trying to attract. So if you're on 10 over 10, you'll Honey, get 10 over guess 10. guess what? I'm not even trying to attract a man that wants me to be in the kitchen. I'm trying to attract, attract a man that is going to buy that yacht. Let us hire the chef to come on the yacht and cook. But him knowing that you'll make that sacrifice for him, he, that's why he's no, going to buy he the yacht wants me to be still get a chef. Of, he does not need me to be in the kitchen. The man just wants me to just look pretty and spend all his money. You sure? Yes. Why, do, why does he care? I meet guys who don't care. What if he didn't have a brain? Like he wasn't very intelligent. He just had a lot of money. Would I be with someone who's Would not intelligent? Would you be with him? If I, should I answer really, really honestly? You <laughs> <laughs> should have to say yes. <laughs> oh my God. If you have enough money to hire people to think for you, why not? Hmm. So what kind of conversation are you going to be having with him? Baby. <laughs> I would be the one to think for you. Like, I think I can. I think people underestimate the fact that, as they say, the head is the head. The neck is what controls the head. Mm-hmm. Imagine you having a woman, regardless of how intelligent men are, there's a reason why they say who you marry also dictates the kind of life you live. Imagine you having a roller by mm-hmm. your side who is like, she can see what you can't see. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even just like basic conversation, like you want to talk about like Gaza and he's like, baby, what's this Gaza? <laughs> like, <laughs> could you? I, to be honest, I, I don't know if I can. I think when we're going out with our friends, I probably just t- text my friends ahead and be like, guys, keep the conversation live. Keep it live. <laughs> but you know the kind of person I am. They're born now, well, bring up Gaza. <laughs> Do you know how this guy's playing all the blues here? Are you crazy? But I'm talking about what he wants to talk about. See, we want to talk about the sun is shining. Yes! Bright! All bright. No, all bright. You know what I mean? Who has time to be... Fair the, enough, you know, fair but enough. Honestly, I don't think I, I would date a guy that is not intelligent. I am a sapio. Like, I, I get turned on by mm-hmm. by brains mm-hmm. as well. Like, I, I would give anything. Because, again, I think it also comes with the fact that I'm a boss in every other aspect of my life. I can't come home and then cater to you mentally mm-hmm. again because I'm catering to everyone I'm paying exactly. salary. So I need someone that I can look up to as a Scorpio. So I would never be the girl that would date a dumb guy. Exactly. I, I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't think I can even stand someone who is not smart. Mm-hmm. I have to learn something I from have you. to. I have to. I have to be inspired by the yes. man I'm with. I'm too intelligent to be with a yeah. dumb I have yeah. to learn from you. Sometimes we even have, I love when I'm dating someone and we have arguments. And it's like we argue passionately yeah. about everything, yeah. politics, yeah. Body. this is what I think. It, yeah. That kind of part of my life turns me on. But guess what? I dated somebody who the relationship was going fantastic. I was falling in love. It was going great. And then we went out with his friends and I was the only girl and it was him or his friends. And we're talking about politics. I think it must have been like maybe PDP, APC or something. And he, um, su- he supported a different political party. It wasn't recent, it was before. And so I gave up like you know obviously my dad is very much into politics uh-huh. so he would tell me and I just knew all these things and like I had like solid points as to why the party that I supported you know was uh-huh. supposed to win and all the guys were like ah this guy was intelligent you know I got like he was jealous he just yeah. stopped talking to me thank you guys for sticking with us this has been such an interesting episode I've been looking forward to this actually and I'm so happy we knocked it out of the pack <laughs> guys chat with you on the next episode of Talk Moments goodbye